Associates. Christine. A tout à l'heure. The Count de Chandon, the chef painting. Me at the Paris Opera. Harry is a fool. Harry is the boulangerie on the square. It's the air of a field called the Legion. here in the opera house is going to be in order. But I want to see for myself. Huh? <laughs> vite, vite. Yeah. Mm. Well, what 
are you waiting for? No, one of the stagehands told me not to go down there. Monsieur Bouquet, is it possible you no longer wish to work for me? Oh, no, no, I do very much, Madame Carlotta. I love my job. Then get going. Yes. I want a complete inventory of everything you can find down there. Old sets, old costumes. I want to know exactly what it is my husband and I are inheriting. Everything? Everything to the very death. Yes, Madame Carlotta. Who's there? Who's there?
this. I must stay on. I have demands, obligations you don't know about. I'm sorry. I'm sure you've done a wonderful job. And would like you out of here tonight. <laughs> Monsieur Carrier. What is it? What happened? I've just been dismissed. No! It's not possible! Well, how can they do this? I bet they bought their way in. How else? And there's the man they bribed. The minister of culture. Subculture is more like it. <clears throat> Dear friends! Ooh. Please, I understand your disappointment. Gerard Carrier has been a part of our lives for years. A truly great managing director, and his retirement distresses me deeply. Ooh. My colleagues, cherished patrons, I give you your new managing director, Monsieur Alain Cholet. And of course, his very talented wife, Carlotta. Carlotta! Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a moment we will never forget. Tell me what? Oh, nothing. It's just a rumor. It's for you. What's going on? Come with me. I'll explain. Phantom! Phantom! Hey, it's just a rumor. Everyone's face is new. Who is uh, Joseph Bouquet? My wife's costume man. She sent him to take an inventory of what's down below. I'm afraid he may have found something he wasn't looking for. Joseph Bouquet broke the rules. <laughs> what rules? You mean no one told you? About what? This opera house. It's haunted. Haunted? By a ghost. What? This ghost has certain rules which must be obeyed. If they are, everything is fine. Obviously, your wife's costume man didn't know the rules. Carrier. All you need to know is don't go down below. What's that? The rules. Carrier, if this is some kind of joke, it is not funny. It's no joke. This ghost has been here for as long as I, but we obeyed his rules, so all went well. The rumor has it he lives by the edge of a lagoon at the lowest level of the opera house. During the days of the Paris Commune, there were torture chambers down there. That's his domain. And anyone who goes down there does not return. He calls himself the Phantom of the Opera. Carrier, I don't believe a word of this. This is a ploy designed by you to get back at me and my wife for having had you fired. <laughs> I do not believe in ghosts. So I assure you What that is going on? Is he dead? Answer my question! Eric! Yes. He's dead. And they were warned. And the man went where he shouldn't. I had no choice. Of course you did. You could have let him go. If I had, he'd have gone right back up. And they'd have been down after me in a second. He found out where I live. And he saw my face. Oh, my God. Come down. All my life, I have lived by threatening to kill. Now it has finally happened. Why did you let him go down there? I didn't know he was going down. It's your job to know! I've been replaced. Replaced? I didn't learn about it until just now. That's why all of this happened. Well, what a day of surprises this is turning out to be. This, uh, this man who's replacing you, does he, perchance, believe in ghosts? No. Well, what am I to do? I'm not sure. Well, I shall have to make him believe, that's what. I'm afraid that won't be so easy. I just tried. It's all changed now, hasn't it? At best, I had a few more years. But surely you must have known. Yes, well, I had rather hoped you'd be able to pick your own successor. Yes, well, so had I. What's to become of me? I don't know. Die. 
God, the place really is haunted. She can't sing. Well, obviously, that's something she doesn't know. Someone should tell her. That's not so easy. She's married to the new manager. Oh, good God. But this means she's probably going to sing all the time. What kind of a horror are you leaving me in? This is not my doing. I know that. You see, she's married to the new manager. Yes. I know what to do. I'll kill her. Eric! Come, 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 come. I'm only teasing. Probably the only one I'll have to kill is her. Oh, my God. Oh, what has happened to your humor? My humor? You're right. I'm sorry. I'm not used to killing people. It's thrown me off of it. I think that her voice is worse than my face. Oh, I cannot live hearing sounds like this. I must have some beauty. You know that. I suppose she'll be choosing the upper season as well. I gather she intends to run everything. I have it. I'm coming with you, Eric. <laughs> That's right. I can't, can I? Sometimes I forget that I am fit for nowhere but these gloomy vaults, bereaved of light, like darkness itself. For I am darkness itself, aren't I? Where are my golden tents? Where are my lands rejoicing? Where is the path that leads out from this place now that all has been changed on this day? Where is the sense of the life that I need now that music's been taken away? vast open world is a voice that can sing. Every note building high, letting free, letting fly like a bird taking wing. Where in the world, if it can be, where is she? What little town hides a girl in a gown with a throat like a lark? With a voice that is strong, who with effortless song makes a light in the dark. Where in the world, where in the world, not a day I rest till that voice is found. Search on the caves, in the streets, the cafes, find the one I desire. You will know she is near by a warmth in your ear and your soul catching fire. Out in the world, somewhere, she was born to command by singing. She with the tone of a bell, the wind is ringing, and she wings. To a plan I weave with grand designs. Go in the world, don't return from the world till you find me the one. With the stance of a queen and an eye as serene and as bright as the sun can shine. I in the world this mirage that I see, and from the world, oh please bring her to me, and I'll make her. Where did he find you? On the 
streets. <laughs> He's getting back to us. <laughs> Let me guess. Did he tell you you had nice legs? Legs? No, he, he heard me singing and thought you had a nice boy. Yes. And asked if you like lessons. <laughs> Mademoiselle, perhaps the new manager can help. I'm not promising anything, but come on. A ghost! A ghost! In my dressing room! Ghost? A ghost! How do you know? <laughs> because the lights flickered. Well, that doesn't mean it was a ghost. I heard Vocalizing. Maybe it was rats. Mm, it sounded more to me like snickering. Then my dressing table rose. Rose? Mm, knocked me over. My costumes fell off the walls, and I distinctly heard that snickering again. My dear, this is not the work of a ghost. You mean this is what these dressing rooms are like? No, no. I simply mean this is a plot. Against me! Against us! Who would want a plot against us? Carrie Ann, the <gasps> former manager. I met with him before. The man is crazed with fury at our having fired him. <laughs> Don't worry, darling. <laughs> oh. I'll take care of everything. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. A deal. A deal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah! Ah! Who are you? Your new staff. Yes, madame. Here to show you what we have planned for the new season. Mm, what you have planned. What you have Sweet. planned. When I am ready, I will tell you what I have planned. Mm -hmm. huh? What I have planned. Do you see the difference? Good. Now get out, out, out. I have a thousand things to do. <laughs> I'm sure that you and I are going to be very happy. No time for fun. Not if the diva has to run an opera comedy. Every small detail to supervise. Every pretty face to scrutinize. I plan beneath these eyes this opera I pace across my bedroom floor Though I do, I live completely for This upper Cause it's mine From the stalls to the portraits on the walls To the balconies that lodges far and near It belongs all to me Every item that you see from the cellar to the crystal chandelier, from the fruity bubble bread facade, to the elevated promenade, from every toilet bowl, to oh, every leading roll. This place is mine. And I will sing, I will glow, I will never let it go. I will hold it ever captive in my hand. Like a god, like a queen, I will enter any scene, control it, like a kingdom I command. And I fit it. Oh! 
clown who attempts to tread the stage. I own her with no polite request. He's here at my behest. Because it's all mine. My curtain and my canopy. My song, my key, my chart, my grand. their feet. I will burn, I will scheme, I will realize my dream. Because if I'm left in the light, I'm incomplete. And the best part, I'm just coming to how they all applaud. For you know who? I can't believe I'm here. And this is my career. It must be seen like a torch. With a grave on the porch, like an edict, like a beacon, like a sign. This This lady is here for lessons. Lessons? She was sent by the Count de Chandon. And who is the Count de Chandon? Heir to a champagne fortune and the opera's biggest patron. Oh. <laughs> Here's his card. <laughs> Give this girl lessons. Well, I'm sure we can find you something. Leave in a Dolly. Dolly. <laughs> this lovely young girl would like singing lessons. What can we do? <laughs> Nothing. You think this girl can sing? Oh, look at how she stands. Look at what she's wearing. My dear, where did you grow up? On a farm? Yes. The world of opera has nothing to do with farm life. Why are you asking me this? She has a patron who is powerful. There is one way to learn to sing. Observe singers. <laughs> My dear, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to let you work for me in the costume department. <gasps> Ooh, she just replaced your chef bouquet, who seems to have disappeared. Disappeared? <laughs> Marie, well, it seems you have a job. <laughs> yes, at the Paris Opera. Have you been here before? Yes, once, as a child. My father brought me. Oh, he was so excited to see Paris's first completely electrical chandelier. Over 400 bulbs. Oh, yes. When father and I first saw it, we thought it was the most beautiful thing we'd ever experienced. But then, the music began. And we forgot about everything else. Well, let me get you set up in your new job. I know it's not exactly what you had in mind. Oh, no, really, monsieur. It, it's wonderful. I mean, just to be around this place. Oh, oh, darling! <laughs> All right, sit up, sit up. All right, the truth. How do I look? You look like spring. Oh. No. What? Better. Oh. You look like. A young spring. Oh, I love. <laughs> like a spring that is not yet even spring. That is about to spring. That is winter. <laughs> no. No, not winter. Spring. Definitely spring. You wouldn't lie to me, would you? No. No. Never. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> yes! 
Yes, that's it. Good. Very good. The only way to learn to sing. <laughs> well, love. 